Are you struggling with low resolution images, unsure how to enhance their quality without distorting the composition? Well, you can rest easy now. I will walk you through how to upgrade your AI art to the next level and beyond. To get started, we will need to download a few things. First, navigate to the extension tab. Next, head over to the available section. Here you will find an option to load from. Click on it. Now type in control net and down here hit install. Once that's completed, search for SD space up and click install. Once you've installed control net, the next step is to download the tile model. Make sure to grab both the PTH and YAML file and place them in your control net folder. Following that, download the 4x UltraSharp Upscaler. After your download is complete, place it here. And voila, you're all set and ready to create some breathtaking AI art. Just one final reminder, don't forget to restart your automatic 11.11 after checking for updates. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. The first step is to find an image you would like to enhance. You can either load an existing image from the PNG info temp and send it over to the image to image section or generate a new image in text to image and send it over. Remember, it's crucial to use the same model throughout this process. This is a new feature in Automatic 11.11 ControlNet. If no input image is loaded, ControlNet will automatically use the image from image to image. To get started with ControlNet, first you need to activate the ControlNet unit. Here, select Tile. Then, set the preprocessor option to Tile Resemble and ensure the model is set to Tile. Next, let's toggle on the control net is more important option and from our script drop down, use ultimate SD upscale. Be careful not to confuse it with SD upscale. Next, in the target size type, choose scale from image size and set scale to 4 for now. By choosing scale from image size, the resize 2 settings become irrelevant. This is key because resize 2 is kept at 2048 by 2048 pixels. And eventually we want to go higher. Finally, under upscaler, select the 4x ultra sharp we downloaded earlier. Feel free to try out different upscalers to find the one that suits your taste and the model you're using. Now let's hit render. While rendering, you might encounter some issues. For instance, sometimes the face doesn't turn out as expected like you see here. Don't worry, I will show you how to fix that in a moment. But before we delve deeper, I have a small favor to ask. If you are finding value in this video, a subscription to my channel would mean a lot to me. It not only lets me know that my content is useful, but it also helps me build a supportive community. Thank you very much. Now let's get back to our content. During your AI art journey, you might stumble upon some artifacts. Artifacts are unwanted or unexpected irregularities for an image. For instance, you might find seams in your image. These are lines where the script stitched the image together. If you see seams, one possible solution is to increase the tile width and height, provided your GPU can handle it. Larger tiles means fewer tiles, hence fewer seams. I typically set the size to at least the size of the initial image, which in this case is 512 by 768. If your GPU can manage more, feel free to double that. Another approach is to switch the type to chess. The algorithm then skips every second tile in the first go, then renders the other tiles. This method usually gives better fitting tiles, since the neighbor edges are already known. Another possible solution for seams is the seams fix option, but in my experience this just blurs the seams. Also, while increasing the downsampling rate may seem like a good idea, it tends to blur the overall image. If you notice artifacts like the one in the image I created, it's worth checking if you forgot to turn off the restore faces option. That was the issue in my case. As you delve deeper into upscaling, you will discover a wide array of upscalers, settings and models to experiment with. If you're seeking upscalers that add intricate details, I suggest you download and try these too. Both are great for creating additional details and realistic faces. For those of you feeling a bit overwhelmed by all this information, I recommend watching my basic workflow tutorial next. It provides a straightforward workflow without the complexities of ControlNet. It's a great starting point.